Lesson nine, practice problems. Number one, the student government snack shop sold 32 items this week. For each snack type, what percentage of all snacks sold were of this type? All right, so um, this is easy. This is easy, right? This is just going to be, um, that's 8%, 6%, 14%, 4%, right? No, that's not right. That's terrible, terrible. That's not how that goes. So what we're going to need to do is, um, you know, to find a percent, uh, we're going to do the part divided by the whole, and then multiply that by 100, or in other words, move the decimal over two places. So you can do it that way. And um, now all these numbers right here, these are all parts, right? 8 is a part, 6 is a part, 14 is a part. Those are all parts. We need to know what the whole is. We need to know what the total. So there's... <clears throat> you just add them all up, 8, oh, 6 plus 14, that's uh, 20, 28, 32. So everything adds up to 32. There's 32 items that were sold. So that's what we're going to do. So for the fruit cup, we're going to do 8 divided by 32 times 100. All right, for the veggie sticks, you're going to do 6 divided by 32 times 100. For the chips, we're going to do 14 divided by 32 times 100. And water is going to be 4 divided by 32 times 100. And then uh, when you do all the math here, let's just go ahead and fill this out. So 8, that's going to be 25%. Right there. I'll just put 25% there. Not that you have to put it there, but I'm going to put it there. Uh, the veggies, veggie sticks is going to be, um, it's going to be what, 18.75? All right, the chips is going to be 43.75%, and the water is going to be 12.5%. All right, so for number two, we've got select all the options that will have the same value as 3.5% of 20. So 3.5% of 20, um, you know, the word of means multiplication a lot of times, especially with percent problems. So it's going to be A, that's 3.5% of 20. Now, the, the percent has not been changed necessarily to the decimal equivalent, but that's okay. Um, now, B is just 3.5 times 20, which is not the same thing as 3.5% times 20. So that is not going to be, that's not going to work. And um, now for C, they have the right idea there, uh, but they didn't move the decimal far enough. You have to move it over two places, not just one. So that one does not work. D is perfect because that was, that was moved over two places. And then E, what about that one? That one looks totally different from all the others, but you know, if you know a little thing, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a little thing you can do. It's called halving and doubling. You know, you can do like, I don't know, let's say you want to do 8 times uh, 12 or something like that. And um, well, let's, let's make it easier. 8 times 6, you know, because we know that that's 48. 8 times 6 is 48. So let's say we take um, let's say we take half take half of eight that's four and let's say we double six and you get twelve and you get the same product you get the same forty you get forty eight both ways we do it both ways and that's kind of what's going on here so like if we double it looks like they doubled three and a half percent you know three and a half percent 
3.5% times 2 is going to be 7%. And then uh, for the 20, they, they took half of it, divided by 2, and that's 10. And that works too. All right, for number 3, uh, we've got 22% of 65 is 14.3. What is 22.6% of 65? Explain your reasoning. All right, so for this one right here, um, what we're going to do is, you know, we could easily just change these to decimals, but I don't think that's how it wants us to do this. It wants us to kind of think this out intuitively and um, use good mathematical reasoning. So what, what we could do is, you know, like if you see here, like I'm not going to draw a diagram, but these percents are really, really close. You know, they're, they're essentially, oops. They're really close. They're only six tenths apart, six tenths of a percent apart. And so um, what I would do is, you know, like, I don't know, 10, you know, 10% of 65 is 6.5. 1 percent of 65 is 0.65. And then 0.1 percent of 65 is going to be 0 0.065. And that's what I was looking for here. Because we have right here, we have six of those. We have six tenths, right? Six tenths. So if we multiply that by six, you know, if you multiply that by six, you're going to get I think that, what's that, 0.39 or something? I can't remember. Uh, 0.065 times 6, yeah, 0.39. That equals 0.39. And so if we, um, you know, if we add that on to 14.3, because that's all the part that was added there, so we just do 14.3 plus 39 hundredths, and you get, you get, 14 and 69 hundredths. Number four, bakery used 30% more sugar this month than last month. The bakery, if the bakery used 560 kilograms of sugar last month, how many did it use this month? All right, so this is the one we're gonna do. Um, this is a percent of increase percent of increase, so we're going to add that to 100%, so that's going to be 130%, 130% times the initial amount, and that is going to equal the new amount, the amount that it changed into, or the amount that it changes, you know, from, or whatever it is. So we're going to do 1.3, put a zero here if you want, you don't need to. Now the initial amount is 560 kilograms. So you're going to do that. So you're going to do 1.3 times 560. And that equals All right, for number five, match each situation to a diagram. The diagrams can be used more than once. All right, so you can definitely tell, like looking at diagram A, looking at diagram A, that looks like a percent of decrease, you know, because we're comparing this, we're comparing this 15% part, you know, that's smaller than the 100% part. And this is gonna be an increase. So for A, so for A, what do we got there? Um, the amount of apples this year decreased by 15% compared to last year. Yeah, so that's going to be A. Because so that, that shows a decrease right there in the number of apples, right? This is the number of apples there were last year. There was more. There was more of them. And this year there's fewer of them. The amount of pairs in this uh, amount of pairs this year is 85% of last year's amount. 
Now that's also going to be A. All right, because this is, that's the number of pairs, and then this smaller area is pairs. And so that's, you know, if this is 15%, the part that remains is 85%, because both those numbers add up to 100. The amount of cherries this year increased by 15%. Well, that's going to be B. That's a, that shows an increase of 15%. And um, D also shows an increase, so that's got to be V. That was easy. All right, number six. A certain type of car has room for four passengers. Write an equation relating the number of cars, which is N, to the number of passengers, which is P. All right, so write an equation to that. So the, anybody that asked me for help, I was telling you guys that your, your equation is going to look something like this. It's either going to be... Um, it's going to be n equals 4p, or it's going to be p equals 4n. It's going to be one of those equations. Now, it can't be both. It's going to be one of the two. All right, so all we have to do, you know, like, it's really easy to think, like, for instance, that two cars equals eight passengers. All right, so we have eight passengers for two cars, because four times two, right? That's really easy to do. All right, so if, um, I don't know, if we, let's say we do, uh, for this one, if I put, if I put two and four, like, if I, let's say if I put eight for P for that one, does four times eight equal two cars? No, that can't be it, All right? That is not going to be it. And let's say um, let's say we do two cars for this one. Two cars, and you do four times two. Four times two equals eight. See that works perfectly in that equation right there. So it's p equals four n. So that is the equation we're going to use for b. P equals four n. So how many passengers can fit in seventy eight cars? Well, 78 equals 4 times what number? So we just divide by 4. Now, uh, another thing, too, that I was noticing that when I was helping people with this, when we do 78 divided by 4, you don't get a perfect number. You get 19.5. So n equals 19.5 cars. But that's not the answer. It's not 19.5 because we can't have half of a car. All right, and we don't want to round that down to 19 cars because if you think about it, 19 times 4, 19 times 4, is that going to equal um, 80 or 78? Sorry, and it's not. It equals 76. So 19 cars would be too little. You'd have two people that are stuck without a ride. So it's got to be 20 cars. 20 times 4 is going to be 80, which is what I wanted to say before. But yeah, that's 80. All right, how many cars would be needed to fit 78 passengers? Oh, I just did this wrong. All right, so for B, we're going to use that equation, P equals 4N. And um, we're just going to put 78 in place of N. So you're just going to do 78 times 4, which is 312. All right, how many cars would be needed to fit 78 passengers? Well, we're just going to do the same equation. P equals 4N, but this time uh, 78 is going to be P. And we're going to do 4N. And then when you divide by 4, you know, when we divide both sides by 4, um, we get 19.5. 
So you get n equals 19.5. Now think about that realistically for this problem, because it says how many cars. All right, so we're not going to be able to cut a car in half. We're, we're not going to be able to get half of a car. I mean, I guess we can get a car half the size, but that's not really what the problem is asking. So what we could do is, well, let's kind of make some sense out of this. Um, 19 cars, you know, if you, if you multiply that by 4, okay, let's say we just round it, like, not that it rounds down, it really should round up, but 19, 19 times 4 is 76, all right, so that's, that's too few, all right, you have two people that are going to be without a ride, so it's going to have to be 20 cars. Because 20 times 4 is 80. All right, so that will fit. That won't fit 78 perfectly, but you'll have you'll have enough cars to fit 78, and have room for two more people if you need to.